Say all right, so first and foremost, I want to give all praises and honor glory to Yahweh, Ba Shemmy or Shai Ba Shemmy Kakodash. We say the man is a person and elders are great, and we will teach our person in the truth. And we say salutation, so we are coming to the pushing the word in the truth and sincerity, day in and day out in the constant season or season. We say Shalom. You know, once again, going into a video here, and it's basically touching upon, you know, how how, how Jake's out there, you know, all these people out there, they, they, they mock, how they mock the Lord and they mock the messengers of the Lord. You know, they mock, they mock his words, they mock his messengers, and so forth. You know, when you're outside there on the streets, you see all the all the mock. Especially when you're preaching the word of the Lord. You understand? Especially when you're bringing up all the scriptures, you see in the comment boards how how they, how, how they make mockery of um of, um of the Lord and, and his messengers and, and his word. You understand? But but with, with them making mockery, they have to pay for that mockery. They have to receive judgment for the mockery that, that, that they do. You know? So you see if everything for Jake is a laugh, everything for Jake is a kicks. You understand everything everything for them is a laugh, a hee hee ha ha, you understand? And all, and, and, and and being in some abominable act, doing some abominable stuff, right? Committing all the sort of abominations on a daily basis and, and they believe they they're not gonna receive any judgment for what it is to do. You understand? So when when now the man of the Lord come in and sort of warn them, sort of tell them about the thing, you know, you receive judgment for that, they believe that they're gonna continue forever. They laugh at that. They make mockery of that. Not knowing what is going on all around them, not knowing what is taking place. You understand? Not knowing what it is coming their way. You understand? Because they believe that the, e the evil will continue forever. They believe that the wickedness they do will, will, will abound. You understand? Especially being in this wicked place that, 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 that agree with what it is they're doing. That matter of fact, that have them doing what they're doing. Right? But what they don't understand is things coming their way. I'm making mockery of, of, of the Lord and his messengers, you have you have judgment to receive for that. Now, before I play the video, let me bring forward the scripture here. <clears throat> this is the book of Second Chronicles chapter. Second Chronicles chapter thirty six. Right? 36 verse 16 right <clears throat> let's say um maybe from verse 15 it say and the lord god of their fathers sent to them by his messengers let's start over and the lord god of their fathers sent to them by his by his messengers rising up betimes and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place Verse 16, he said, but they mock the messengers of God and despise his words and misuse his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. Right? So he telling him, he said, but they mock the messengers of God. And that is what they continue to do even unto this day. You understand? You see how there is mock. Right? Matter of fact, when you look at the, when you look at the meaning of the word mock, right? It's a mock, it's a tease or laugh at any scornful, tease or laugh at any scornful or con contemptuous manner. When you look at contempt, it's, it means scornful, right? Scornful. It's a not authentic or real, but without the intention to receive. It's a derision, right? to the ride right to the ride and that is what they do so they so they laugh they scorn they scorn they scorn upon the word the lord messengers they scorn upon the lord words they scorn upon the lord you understand so when they say say what they say but they mock the messengers of god and despise his words and despise his words right the mm -hmm. A foreign adversary. If words. not a foreign adversary with a weapon, what then explains the symptoms the the that these people have come forward with? 1,500 reports people, uh, across 96 countries. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a great question uh, for, for which the intelligence the community does not have uh, a great answer. All right, so you've got kids because, and again, a teacher, that, that, that and they, they all as well, as start said, this uncontrollable twitching. So bad, CDC comes in to investigate, and they find... Well, they found that there wasn't an explainable cause for the illness, and there wasn't anything 
in the environment that was causing the illness. And actually, it's a documented phenomenon called a mass psychogenic illness. So this is something that's actually been reported as far as 600 years ago. It's in their head, is what you're saying. Yeah, it's, it's in their head, but some of the symptoms are factual. Feeling dizzy, feeling headaches. Um, it's a reaction to something in their environment. And, you know, sometimes it's prescribed to anxiety uh -huh. or uh, stress probably as the most common cause. And, and, and I was reading about this and they said that it's, and it was in this right? case, every it's single person, right. female, it's including the right. teacher, yes. that this is something so no remedy, that, nothing that happens that to women more than men, where it, there's, it's there's it's no reason it's for it, it's but all of a sudden the they, they almost right have these you know, convulsions, right? these seizures. Tina Adifer, a former foreign services officer stationed in Havana who told NBC News about the moment this all hit her. Saying, in her words, I felt like I was being struck with something, pain that I've never felt before in my life, as if I'd been seized by some invisible hand that I couldn't move. Sajay spoke to the CIA's first investigator into the situation, Dr. Paul Andrews, who himself became a victim when he traveled to Havana to investigate. This is a brief. I think I went to bed probably around 1130. I slept in my jeans and a T-shirt in case I had to evacuate and quickly. Seen, laugh, no. At about 4.56, 4.57, um, I was awakened laugh, laugh, with laugh, laugh, laugh the best. severe pain and in my right ear. With that same, with the Lord is and have the, um, the last laugh. I had a lot of and nausea and, and a terrible, terrible headache, and I've never without suffered from headaches before. The right? amount of ringing in my I'll ears was just work. astounding, Let's go to, um, and things were getting worse and worse and worse. And I started to hear the noise, and I'm really in disbelief. And you believe that that night there was some sort of injury or damage to either your inner ear, the nerves around your inner ear, or your brain? Correct. Because Absolutely. Really not then, in his hotel room, see, the trip took a dangerous turn. Night. I woke up in the middle of the night because I had this incredible case of, of vertigo. It felt almost as if I was in some kind of, you know, carnival ride. And I'll tell you, Catherine, I had spent years in, in the war zones of Iraq and Afghanistan. I put my life on the line. This was the most terrifying experience of my life. I had no control. Just to hear someone actually describe these unexplained health incidents, what transpires, somebody who never had these symptoms before, so yeah, suddenly yeah. comes on, no, no so advance thing, warning, and no, no indication. I mean, you have concussion-like symptoms without a right? blow to the head. You have no That's why they call this, for, that's why we're calling it the immaculate for, concussion. You know, it's hard to explain, drink of the wine but of the you hear from somebody who's a physician himself, goes right? to investigate, and develops you have no remedy to stop that. Her flight from Singapore to Vietnam was delayed for several hours because at least one U.S. diplomat had to be medevaced from Hanoi over the weekend. But some have questioned whether the syndrome is real, suggesting that the stress caused what's called a psychogenic illness of the mind, which is now spreading. And this was one of the biggest investigations in the, in the modern history of the intelligence community. They conducted for years intensive look at, at as many of these things as they could get their arms around. And they found not only no evidence of foreign involvement, they found evidence refuting foreign involvement. Remember, the working hypothesis for a while was this was an energy weapon, potentially right. microwave energy. Russia was the likely suspect. But they worked really hard to confirm that hypothesis, and they ended up refuting it. And they're saying there is no one set of symptoms here. So they're really saying there isn't a Havana syndrome per se. There are a lot of disparate and different situations. So this is just like one of these things that's like the Bermuda Triangle, destined to forever be kind of a mystery? In the last year, new evidence has emerged that led a panel of scientists sponsored by the State Department to conclude that pulsed microwaves were most likely responsible in at least some of the cases. For many of these people, no real injury, coming. real Something neurologic like injury doing. took place. Right? It took place through a mechanism that we cannot... Moving on now to what has become the most confusing story in the well, news these days, and here's why. Because as compelling as this video I'm about to show you yeah, is, we just do not have see. straight answers on what right? we're seeing. It's very interesting. I don't know why it's coming at this time, but it's very significant for a couple of reasons. This will help the public understand what our military personnel are encountering all over the world. We're getting on the Defense Department side 50 to 100 reports per month. This is happening globally. It's happening overseas. It's happening off the East Coast and the West Coast. We're back right. now with a story that got us all so talking and thinking today. It's a fascinating yeah. new study yeah, about the mysteries point. of death, what happens to our we brains and bodies, and what it might really be like 
to die. Because I'm not going to go on ass forever. DMT, a recreational psychedelic drug, is the subject of a study and criminal pursuit by the DEA. It is also the center of a continued popular experimentation using ayahuasca, the plant which contains the chemical. In tonight's special report, KTSM's reporter Ruben Olge explores DMT and its appeal to scientific research and particularly humans. In 2015, Marx and Einhauser wrote, and I paraphrase, to materialize the living experience, one must study reward. The philosophical, physiological question is not due to humans, since we tend to crave a reality which is far from our own. DMT has been called the spirit molecule. In a study involving scientists, the overall reaction was specific to the ability of the participants to see things otherwise not available without the chemical. Wow. So this is, this is a really wild way to think about it because to this time, I never even considered that. I always thought of it as being something that was responsible maybe for very vivid dreams or something that was responsible for near-death experiences or what happens to you when you die, the right. idea of a portal. But I never thought about it as being something that is regulating regular, everyday reality. Um, well, you know, one of the hallmarks of the DMT effect is that it feels more real than real. We heard it all. The Cincinnati writer's heart stopped for several minutes in the hospital in 2004. And I could see everything, feel everything, hear everything, even though I know now I was medically you know, dying. Well, I felt an men. overwhelming rush and, and almost place, a, a pressure being pulled, happened. like almost like a force field being pulled back into say, my body. Been, then I woke say, up and so saw the doctors that, that I had been seeing and <laughs> working on me. So Experience like Hackett's part of a new scientific study and published and today. It found people who and went into cardiac arrest remedy. and were brought back to life by CPR. Almost 40% had a recollection of dying. NYU's Dr. Sam Parnia is the lead researcher. We found signs of normal remedy. brain electrical activity that is consistent right. with the types of things that we all have so when we're fully cure, conscious. To stop that destruction. Like my early 20s, I had so much look out potential at that things moving, of, of but I also just wanted to go out and travel and live too. life and do my so thing, and the psychedelics were like this whole new thing to explore. But anyway, so about three years later, I had combined um, mushrooms and something else but no smoking weed and i had like a bad trip from it and I, and I never had a bad trip before i was always so confident so sure of myself and then something just clicked i was at a party and all of a sudden it felt like i was just actual projecting right. out of my body as it woo like crazy as that sounds like i was like looking down myself at nice. the party i was like wait well, where am i to show what? Oh, things that, you things that, well just like go through the, about. the people who describe you know, them describe them fairly consistently kind of that come up it's the this. exact same experience okay, you've just decided it's not real and you've decided it's not real because you're putting it into this category of hallucination like what does that even mean what does that even mean? So You're okay. actually having yeah, that experience. Yeah, sure I don't know what it is. Stop, stop, stop. I mean, I, I like stop. to play, hey, hey. play devil's when advocate, when, when, when and I like to think word, that maybe I'm messing with my own head, and maybe I'm just like, hey, it's like, what, I'm I, like well, through so doing what? Like, like, looking at it like maybe it's just my neurochemistry going bonkers and you know interacting with my visual cortex could produce hallucinations. But I, it doesn't feel like that. that's, what I'm, that's why I'm trying to figure out. If you're bullshitting yourself when you're over there, <laughs> or if it's you really are over there. But what I tell people is it's the same experience. Yeah, what difference does it make? Right? But yeah. You don't yeah. Have that. Um, it's, you know, previously invisible. Yeah. Yeah. And it contains the information. So and we just came across a very odd, very under the radar release of some videos and documents that I've been trying to get for years. Now, with no explanation, all of a sudden, Customs and Border Patrol has released 10 videos from what looks like forward.